Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, seven, and five. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below the video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing what we plan to use for my eldest for next year, which will be our fifth year of homeschooling. I've actually, in all my years of homeschooling, never done a video showing you our entire curricula lineup for the year, partly because I think there's a lot of value in talking about curricula after you've completed it, but also because I generally tend to tweak our decisions even into the first few weeks of homeschooling. Sometimes I discover very early on that this particular curricula is just not gonna work for us, or I discover that I've just added on too much to our plate, etc. This year, we moved to a new house in a new town, and I have gradually been culling resources for that particular grade level as I have put our homeschool room in order. Our homeschool room is actually not completely in order. What you see behind me are some of our bookshelves, and I will take you over now to the bookshelf that contains the curricula for my rising fifth grader. He will be turning 11. I don't really stick to grade levels when it comes to curricula. In some things he's definitely advanced, in some things he's just on par. And so throughout the rest of the week, as I present to you my second child and my third child's curricula, you'll see that their curricula also cross over um, different technical grade level years based on their abilities. Oh, and just to let you know, because I am doing this downstairs, I don't have my regular camera equipment with me and I will be holding my iPhone with my hand. So the video footage might be a little bit shaky, but so many people have been asking me to do this lineup that I figured I might as well just go ahead and do it today when I have the time. Keep in mind that some of these decisions might change throughout the year. And if I do change anything, I will tell you in my recurring homeschool updates and I'll tell you why we made the shift, etc. So if you walk on over here, I'm going to stand on a chair, hopefully not kill myself, and tell you all about these things. So this shelf up here is for my eldest, my rising fifth grader. And I'm just gonna pick things randomly off the shelf. They're loosely organized right now and there's a few things that are missing from this shelf but I think this will cover most of it. So right here you have grade five's lightning literature and composition. This will be our third year for my son using lightning literature and composition. He did level three, he did level four, and now level five. I really, really like it. I will be doing a complete flip through of this curriculum. It includes grammar and um, composition tied to the reading book that they're working on at the time. So I really like that approach. I'm actually gonna walk down here just to show you some of the literature selections for Lightning Literature Level 5. And they are the ones that you see here in green. So I actually label all our books by what curricula they go with. And so you have Boy, Tales of Childhood, Holes, Brown Girl Dreaming, The Mighty Miss Malone, Number the Stars, The Phantom Tollbooth, um, The White Mountains, and there's a few others that aren't here yet, but I believe uh, Tuck Everlasting was in level four, but you can see here it's marked several times because it's in several different ones of our curricula. It's actually gonna be in our literature curricula with Build Your Library level five as well. Speaking of Build Your Library level five, all the curricula you see here with the blue circles belong to either Build Your Library's level five American history or Blossom and Roots River of Voices um, American history part one. So they extend from here all the way across to down here. And there's quite a variety of books. I'll do a slow pan for you so you can get a little bit of an idea of what might be included, but they are all excellent choices. I especially like that River of Voices um, made a real concerted effort to talk to native authors and um, authors of color so that she could get a real perspective on American history that isn't the norm. Okay, I decided to bring some of these books down just to make it easier on myself. Another book that we're going to be using is 180 Days of Spelling and Word Study for fifth grade. And this one is one of the first times we're using a dedicated spelling book. One thing I did like about it is that it combines spelling with vocabulary. And I just like the way that they uh, have their units separated out by different types of common endings. I like that each page wasn't too excessive and that the exercises seemed 
really worthwhile, like filling in the blank and writing synonyms and antonyms, as opposed to just crosswords and some other spelling books that I think do a lot of pointless exercises. This is the spelling book we've been using for years, and I really like it. It's just lists of spelling words, and it starts off in print, but then works its way into cursive as your child might get to that level. And this is the spelling book we use for all of my children. This is the Spelling Plus workbook, not the actual textbook. We don't write in it, we just use it to spell out lists. Um, this is um, from Memoria Press, their Greek myths book. We will not be writing in this book. Uh, we will just be going through and using it for vocabulary and comprehension questions. We'll be using it in conjunction with, um, I don't know how to say their name, the Dollars. I don't know, Greek myths book, which is a nice Greek mythology book, though certainly not my favorite. For handwriting for him, we will be using the Getty Dubay Book D series, and he has not used Getty Dubay in the past. However, my middle daughter has used Book A and Book B, and I'm really impressed with her handwriting, so I thought I would switch my son into this. He's already started some of it, and he's doing a really nice job. He has actually really pretty handwriting on his own. Um, I like Getty Dubay because they emphasize an italic st style of handwriting. So as a transition into cursive, it's this mix of italic print and cursive, which is, I think, the way most of us actually write as adults. So I like that idea. The cursive book that he's going to continue is the one that he started this year, and it is a cursive jokes book. One of the things I like about this book is it has this area at the top where you have the chance to trace inside the lines, if you can see, and then you can practice it. He's gotten to the point where he doesn't really need to trace inside the lines, and so he just goes straight to the writing himself. We are also going to be using Prescripts. This is a book that I bought in our very first year of homeschooling in my over-enthusiasm for homeschooling supplies. Um, this is made for classical conversations, and since we're doing American history this year, and this book has copy work of American history facts and quotes, I thought that that would be a nice little addition to our handwriting practice. Another language arts book that we'll be using for reading comprehension is by the Critical Thinking Company. This is Reading Detective, the beginning book, and basically it's standard reading comprehension. One thing I like about it is that it breaks up the reading passages by letter, and then it might ask the student to to look at one particular paragraph that they've identified, for example, paragraph B, etc. In other areas, it might ask which section best shows a particular concept. And, and th those questions are the same type of questions that show up later in standardized exams like the SAT and the ACT, so I thought that was good practice. Another book that we're using from Critical Thinking Company next year is Word Roots Beginning. We actually started this book this year, but we didn't do it in a concerted fashion. And we only got to about lesson 12, and the book has about 24 lessons. So as you can see, it goes through different prefixes, root words, and suffixes, and includes different review areas as well. I like it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite um, way to learn roots and suffixes for a variety of reasons that I'll get into in a, in a dedicated review, but I do think it's a really good introduction to a lot of common ones that you see. Moving into geography and social studies, some of the resources we'll be using include this state-by-state -state guide from the Crafty Classroom. I am an affiliate of the Crafty Classroom, and you can find that link in the description box down below. I love their curricula for um, reading and for early education. Their state guide is actually really beautiful. They're actually updating it this year, so I may switch over to the updated version, but in any case, I will definitely do a dedicated review on that to show you. But you can see every single page in their state guide is a coloring page with a complete map of the United States where they can identify that particular state. It has the state flag, a place to draw in the capitals and major key geographical features of the state, the state nickname, the abbreviation, the state bird, and the state flower. And in addition to these pages, I bound this myself and I also added the Crafty Classroom's state bird booklet. So you can see here they have all the state birds laid out in color for you and it says exactly which states have that bird. And it's designed so that you could actually cut and paste this into a lap book like thing, but I just have it all in one big binder for them. The book that I'm using in conjunction with the Crafty Classrooms uh, notebook is Don't Know Much About the 50 States. And you can see it kind of tracks a lot of the information that they ask for. So I think this will be a nice addition 
to our geography study. One book that I might be trying out next year is the Trick Geography USA book. This is just the student version. Um, I'll be doing a dedicated flip through so you can see what this is all about. This is not a secular resource. It definitely has reference to Christianity in it, but it is very cute in the sense that it gives you fun little graphic ways to remember the shapes of states and what, sh what states are famous for um, producing, etc. So I just thought for a fun little addition, that might be a nice supplement. This is a really old um, Spectrum Geography United States of America book that I'm using for grade five. I think I picked this up at a thrift store once. I like the fact that it is about the United States of America and that it includes different types of skills. So it's not just a reading book, it's not just a worksheet, but it includes lots of different types of questions that are relevant to American history and American geography. Another geography resource that we will be using this year is by the Mark Twain Media Publishing Company by Carson DeLosa and it is geography warm-ups. We will not be writing in this book, we will just be using it um, for sort of just daily warm-up questions in the way that a teacher might use them as a start now activity in a classroom. So you can see here, it's a very simple question. It's just labeling different continents and oceans. And as you progress, the questions get a little bit more complicated, like using a dictionary, what is a peninsula? Um, which of the Midwestern states has a large peninsula extending into three of the Great Lakes? But it's only four questions, all about one type of concept. And it goes through different areas of the world. So you have South American questions, you have Asia questions, etc. And I really like the way that this just helps you um, process geography in a way that you might want to remember as you grow up. Coming back to A River of Voices, this is the student notebook. And you can definitely look at my dedicated video on this. I will link it in the description box down below. But I'm super excited to use this curriculum. This is the parent guide. I'm super excited to use this curriculum with my son. I think it's a great way of approaching American history and staying true to all the different voices that contributed to the origins of our country. This is a really old book. This is We the People, and it's actually produced by the Center for Civic Education. Um, I believe this is like 1995 version. They have a newer version, and I'm not going to get it. And the reason is because I want to use this mainly for civics. And there's a lot of things about civics that have not changed since 1995. For example, the three branches of government and the Bill of Rights and the difference between the branches, the, the idea of checks and balances in our government, etc. So I don't think I really need to buy a newer version of this. Obviously, as I use it, I'll find out. But I got this for 99 cents at a thrift store. Another book that we'll be using is by Shell Education. It is Understanding Elections, What's Your Vote? You'll notice it says K through 2. The reason I'm still going to use this is because my son actually used this uh, years ago in 2016. And I thought it would just be a fun book to review and to also finish up. Because we got about, I would say, three-fourths of the way through it. But it is definitely good all through elementary school, not just K through two. Some of these activities we might not do, but I think that the way they approach it is really well done. And if you are interested in this book, they do have it available for higher levels as well. But basically, I just wanted to finish it up, see sort of what his answers were before, and... Um, have a good time with it. My younger kids will be doing this one as well in a new book. The book we will be using for social studies is this Harcourt social studies book that I also picked up at a thrift store once. And I really like um, school books for social studies. I think it does a really nice job of talking about different areas in the world, different countries. And even though it is much more textbook oriented, I think the Harcourt editions do a nice job of introducing really important keywords and vocab words that you want your child to know as they discuss geography and social studies in general. Last but not least, we'll also be using 180 Days of Social Studies for fifth grade by Shell Education. We used this last year for the first time in the second grade level and the fourth grade level, and I was actually really impressed with how they approach social studies. Um, in terms of the material they cover, the material is much more what we covered in school. I like how they switch between different areas of social studies, so from civics to geography to history. 
I like that they use primary resources and that you have these pictures to show your kids that the questions are fairly short and simple. Whenever we have a paragraph answer like this, we generally will just do it orally, but I really like these books. I think that they did an, a nice job of talking about different topics for about like five to 10 pages and then moving on to another historical event. Over to nature study and science, we will be using the Nature Connection Outdoor Workbook. Um, this is a book that was included in Build Your Library's Level 1. Both my younger daughters will be doing Level 1 again this year, and my son will be doing Level 5, but I thought it would be fun to do the Nature Connection together as a family. This book actually comes like with a regular binding, but I took it to Kinko's and had them cut it and spiral bind it, and it makes it a lot easier to use. It's a really nice book if you use it casually. I think some people attempt to do it page by page and find out that it's really hard to use. I like that it's a mix of different activities, doing activities and exploring activities as well as drawing activities. Next up is Evid Moore's Daily Science for grade five. Now my son has actually never used the Daily Science series, but my daughter used it for the first time this year um, for the second grade level. And the way this works is you have a big idea, here's the teacher guide page, and then for every day of the week, that big idea gets fleshed out with different vocab words and a different little reading with an activity. The activity is generally pretty small and self-explanatory, but you can see how that question is the same for that entire week. How do people give blood without running out of it? And then you learn a little bit more and a little bit more. And then there's a little unit review when you get to the, the end of that concept and you can just get an idea of how much work there is. It includes different types of activities like fill in the blank, reading comprehension, matching, analyzing graphs and charts. So I think it's so well done. And you can actually get this as a student edition or a teacher edition um, with the answer key, etc. This is another book that I picked up from a thrift store ages ago for 99 cents or so. It's just a standardized test book for fifth grade. I don't always do the standardized test books that I have, but I always keep them out because in case I see that my student needs a little more practice in something like reading comprehension or just answering multiple choice questions, these are really nice to pull out and even do just a few pages at a time to sort of get that practice under their belt. Here we have a logic book. This is by Critical Thinking Company's um, Dr. Funster's Think a Minutes Level B Book One. He actually did A1 last year, and these are just logical puzzles, you know, a huge variety of different types of logic puzzles. Another book that we'll be using is Mind Benders. Again, every single year my students have done Mind Benders, and my son is up to the level A3, so you can see these visual puzzles get a lot bigger than in the um, earlier levels but these are just fun little mystery clues. So it gives them a series of three to four clues. And by crossing out um, the options that are no longer possible, they come up with the answer to the riddle or the answer to the mystery. For math, our core math for next year, just as in the two prior years, will be Math Mammoth. So next year we'll be doing um, Math Mammoth 5A and 5B. It goes through a variety of different types of mathematical concepts, including the four operations, large numbers using a calculator, problem solving, decimals, graphing and statistics, fractions, adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing them, as well as geometry. This is part of the light blue series. My printer was a little off, which is why it's looking a little bit green here, but it prints out in full color. The thing I like about Math Mammoth is that it really is a very comprehensive curriculum that allows you to do math both in a traditional format as well as with an eye towards mental math and logical mathematical conceptual thinking. So you have here a lot of helpful resources that she lists for internet games and internet visuals that would help with math. She also lists general games that you can play like with a deck of cards, etc. easy manipulatives. A lot of people will talk about Math Mammoth like it doesn't have um, manipulatives and games included, but she really does a great job of giving you more than you would probably have time to do. In every single Math Mammoth chapter, she has these textual boxes where she does teaching and then there will be problem boxes as well. So every single section includes both textbook sections and problem sections. That's why it's called a work text, and it combines the textbook with the workbook in one. We supplement our Math Mammoth with Singapore Math Challenge. So this is the Singapore Math Challenge Word Problems book. I really, really like this book, and I actually bought it for my younger daughter as well in the younger levels. This is for grades four and up, we got 
to about 140 in this book and we will just be continuing through as you can see the book really does deal with like algebraic concepts and it does a great job of teaching your child algebra far before it's normally taught in school they do this by incorporating things that they're learning at grade level like fractions and money but also always introducing an unknown. So there's these little teacher comments to help you out. There's only one problem per page. It's challenging, but definitely, definitely good to strengthen your mathematical thinking. Another book that we're gonna be using next year is also based on Singapore math, and that's called Math Challenge the Singapore Way. This one has about two pages per problem, and it's also word problems, as you can see. So we'll be doing a lot fewer of these but if you can if you have experience in singapore math you can see that the thinking and the way they make you analyze the problem is very much in line with um, the traditional singapore math books so last but not least we have our spirit journal which is just a composition notebook but we've been keeping it for a long time and we do different kind of printouts and pages in it some of the printouts are from big life journal so growth mindset printouts some of them are from quotes and poems that we can do copy work for but we just continue this as we grow and it's a really nice way of just reminding kids that you know it's important to think about your heart as you grow and and to be kind to yourself etc we'll be finishing up our big life journal if you want to see a review of this i've done a dedicated review of it and i am an affiliate for big life journal as well we will also be using their daily edition which is a new book that they have and it's a daily type of gratitude journal i think it is so well done definitely the best gratitude journal i have ever seen um, for children and i'm super excited to use it i initially only bought it for my older two kids but i will be buying it for my younger child as well because i think it is wonderful and you can find that affiliate link in the description box down below another book that we had bought ages ago is the time capsule a seriously awesome kids journal and we've done several pages in here but we have not finished it so i just thought it would be fun to continue and it's totally okay if this takes even a few more years to finish another journal that we had bought ages ago is the three minute gratitude journal and it has a really simple layout as well the big life journal probably will not take you all year if you do it every day i believe it has I don't want to say actually, but I think it has less than 70 pages or so. So this will probably finish this out for the rest of the year. The next book is Thriving with ADHD, a workbook for kids. I've actually done a flip through of this and I will link it down below, but it's a really nice book. It goes through and teaches you how to just think about how your brain works and taking charge of your reactions, um, talking about what hyper focus is, a lot of the different aspects of ADHD in a way that kids can understand and process and and think about because it's important to figure out ways to thrive. Last but not least is What Your Fifth Grader Needs to Know, Fundamentals of a Good Fifth Grade Education by E.D. Hirsch. These have been around forever. I like lots of things about this core knowledge series. Um, there's also some things I don't like, like their approach to history. I do think it's a little bit Eurocentric. However, I like some of the language arts choices they select. I like the scope and sequence they present for you in terms of material that a lot of children will be encountering at this grade level. And some of their maps are really nice. Some of the pictures of primary resources are nice. Um, the newer editions are in color. This is an old one that I got, like I said, for 99 cents. So it is not. I like the section that they have on the arts and on music. I don't really use their math section that much, though it does give you some good diagrams and idea again of what your child might be learning in a typical fifth grade classroom. The science section, again, I don't really use it for anything beyond scope and sequence, but it is a very comprehensive list of like what an average teacher might be teaching their child in a fifth grade classroom. So that was the bulk of our fifth grade resources. Of course, we will be doing other things like extracurriculars. There's a couple of curricula that I didn't talk about in this video, including IEW's SSS Level A, which we'll be using to try to improve my son's essay writing skills. We will also be using maps, charts, and graphs, uh, whatever the next level is for him, but it hasn't come in yet. So that's one of my favorite geography curricula. 
If you wanna see any of this curricula that I've showed you in more detail, let me know. I will attempt to make a video for you um, in the coming months, but I can't promise anything. I do wanna remind everybody that I am going to be doing a small creator series in September. So if you are a small creator and you create anything for homeschooling, whether it be planners or Etsy printables or wood toys or whatever, let me know and I will try to give you some free advertising on YouTube in the month of September. If it is a print product, the only thing I ask is that you send it to me in print form. If it is a Etsy link or something and you just want me to show it and you know show the graphic of it, that's fine with me too. Send me an email at contactprojecthappyhome.com and I'm happy to help you out, especially in this time of COVID. I know that there's been a lot of economic shifts for a lot of families out there and I just like to do the small thing if I can help out in any way. Um, it would be really great so that the homeschool community sticks together. In addition to all the curricula that I showed you, my son has lots of eclectic tastes and so he will be taking an online Lego course. He will also be taking an online theater improv class um, and a uh, Taekwondo class as well. We rejoined our wild and free group and so we will be going on nature hikes and trying to do dissections with them and just arts and crafts activities, etc. So we all are hoping that this year goes well. Of course, with the pandemic, we don't know how it will pan out, but we are hoping for the best, and I hope you guys have a good year set up for you as well. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time, and I wish you the very best day.